Why do we work hard to solve small problems? Why do we reinvent ourselves and our clients over and over? And why are we giving away marketing strategy for free? It's time to bring home bigger paychecks. It's time to create the lifestyle we deserve and to make a greater impact. This is the Fractional CMO Show, and I'm Casey Stanton. Join me as we explore this growing industry and learn to solve bigger problems. Hey, it's Casey here, and welcome back to another episode of the Fractional CMO Show. And today I want to talk about cultivating a spaciousness for creativity to bubble up. So when we think of work, you know, what do you think of? When you think of you working, what do you think of? Do you think of you um, looking online for potential clients to work with and doing outreach to them? Is that work? Yeah, it's probably work. What else is work related to business? Um, Maybe that work is um, uh, buying a program on ads and learning about ads or joining a webinar or watching a masterclass on something. That's work. But like, what about listening to podcasts? Is that work or is that leisure? Right? It's kind of an interesting question. Um, in my eyes, if I listen to information, in many ways, I'm working, right? Now, I'm, I might be out on a walk with my dog. Uh, I might be uh, going out and making groceries and listening to a podcast about, you know, copywriting or business stuff or, you know, whatever. Um, but I still think of that as, as, as work time, um, but it's work time with a certain quality of spaciousness. When we think of working, I think we think that work must be this kind of gripping, focused, committed, zero distraction activity. Maybe you think that work only happens kind of in the flow zone when you're in a state of flow. Certainly that might be when you produce your best work, like that's when your output might be really good. But if you only view work as being in this container of maybe pressure and time and focus and output and outcome, then you lose the kind of lived experience of the work being, maybe this sounds weird, but kind of like breathed through you. And that's a really interesting place to be. I can sit down and I can just churn out stuff. If I want to write emails, I can churn them out, right? I can do that. Um, if I want to uh, put together a slide deck for a webinar, I can sit down and churn that out. And there's a quality of that work that's there. There's a level of focus that's there. And sometimes my creativity is great. If I can get my uh, environment just right, the temperature just right, the clothes I'm wearing just right. Um, you know, I love uh, espresso. Like, so I, I pull a great espresso shot and it's perfect. Uh, it's a one to two ratio of beans to espresso, if you know what I'm talking about. And the crema is just perfect. Like, and it's in that little Bodum cup. Like if that's, if that's what happens and I get in the zone, sometimes it can just feel so great and I can just push myself to, to, to do some outcome. I want to talk about the other side of work, which is the spaciousness that allows creativity to come forth. It kind of calls it forth. Where do you find spaciousness in your life? One ritual that I have which I used to kind of complain about in my life, right? Which is washing dishes. I'm the chief dishwashing officer in my home. Um, just just one of my roles. I wash, like, honestly, 98% of the dishes every single day that everyone uses. And I've got two kids. That's a lot of bottles, um, a lot of plates, a lot of plastic silverware, that kind of stuff. And... Um, back when I was working uh, in college, I worked at a... I worked in plant pathology at Michigan State University, and I really love the labs. And um, I had the responsibility of cleaning all of the glassware. So I had all these uh, flasks and beakers, and my job was to clean that all out. We did some studies on um, wheat, and the neighboring lab actually did studies on ergot, which was pretty interesting. And I would then have these glass, you know, Pyrex containers that had wheat and water in it, which is like glue. So my job would be to go in and clean all of that. And I had a pegboard in front of me. I had this black sink and this pegboard. And um, when I washed something, uh, then I would place it on the pegboard in front of me. And, you know, it's kind of an inverted pegboard. And then everything would dry from there. And I took a sense of pride in kind of the cleanliness of it. And I really found like a meditation in it, uh, just kind of a peacefulness in 
cleaning glassware. And what I found was that I was able to cultivate some space, kind of slow my mind down. And in that calmness, things would come up like wild things, um, cre creative ideas, things that I wanted to do, wild ideas of stories or, you know, something fun or somewhere to go or a desire I have or a funny memory or something. And while I was washing those dishes and while I continue to wash dishes today, um, I kind of let my mind go to that place that is without constraint. And uh, over time, what I've been able to do is channel that spaciousness to be in kind of a certain quadrant of my life, a certain kind of um, subconscious problem solving time. And I don't do it with any force. I just kind of bring about an idea to my mind of something that I want to work on, something that I'm curious about, a problem that I want to solve. Uh, maybe it was an argument that I had with my wife. Maybe it was something with my team. Maybe it was something with a client. Maybe it's me trying to come up with a creative idea for something. But I take whatever this kind of general question is, and I just kind of sit on it. And I, I let my mind kind of wander as I wash, wash the dishes, and then I just bring myself back to that thought again and again and again, very softly. Like, just kind of back to whatever that question is. And I let these um, thoughts just kind of run, and... You know, like a third of the time as I do this, something comes to me that feels kind of given to me. It, it feels like it was there all along and I just finally had a moment to just grab it off the shelf myself and kind of see it. It's just this wonderful experience. I can think of like multiple times it happened. Um, you know, namely this idea of uh, like solve bigger problems. Where did that come from? That came from like me washing dishes one evening. Just a very simple exercise. And I was like, what am I doing here? What do I need to do? Uh, why am I feeling stuck in business? Um, and the answer was because I'm solving small problems. And I said to myself, I must solve bigger problems. That's my job. Solve bigger problems. And I started thinking about all the people that I was um, uh, inspired by in business. And I realized that they were just solving bigger problems than me. All the people that are making more money than me, they were just solving bigger problems than me. So that spaciousness gave me a chance to see that, and I wrote that down, just on like the native note, uh, notes app on my iPhone. I just wrote it down. It's like, oh, that's a really good idea. Um, and that became a cornerstone to a lot of this work here as a fractional CMO. It was just kind of the perfect line for me. And could I have run that through a name generation tool and tried to like muscle it out? Absolutely. And there's probably great tools for it, probably some AI tools out these days that can help you brainstorm. Uh, but for me, I really like kind of the mental game of it. I like the analog game of just kind of putting it into the back of my head and just uh, letting it roll around. The first time I heard about this was from Gary Ben Savanga when he spoke at Brian Kurtz's um, Titans of Direct Response event. And Gary talked about uh, going to bed at night with a problem to solve and just being clear about it, maybe writing it down in a journal and then sleeping on it and then waking up in the morning and just seeing if you have the answer or not and never forcing yourself to have the answer, but just again, allowing the spaciousness to have the possibility of an answer. And um, I think it's just such a fun idea and a fun way to do things. So if you're feeling stuck with where you are in life or with a client, um, maybe you're feeling stuck with um, how you're approaching client work or a specific client problem, um, just being really clear on what the question is that you're asking and then taking space to have that question get answered kind of through you, I think is a really fun exercise and thing to try. This is not something that's going to work right away. But I don't know if your experience will be like mine, but for me, it certainly does work uh, a third of the time, half the time, something like that. To help with that, something that I've been doing uh, as of late that I've been finding incredibly useful is doing morning pages. I would heard about this for a while and um, never thought I needed it. But the idea of morning pages is just to write up to three pages with a pen and paper and just like write, just write whatever's on your mind. Can I do it first thing in the morning? 
And the idea with that is that you just kind of dump all the garbage out of your head, all the half thought thoughts, all of the yearnings that you have or the frustrations that you have or the to-do list or whatever, but you don't write it like a to-do list. This is just like kind of long form. If you want to abandon a word halfway through writing it, do it. If you don't want to use punctuation, it doesn't matter. If your penmanship is sloppy, that's fine. The idea is that you just spend a uh, concentrated time um, just kind of lim- like eliminating everything in your mind, just writing it all out. And the act of writing it out processes it and clarifies kind of what was important from that. And if you want to take action from that, you can. But if I look back at my morning pages, I have like nothing circled. I have no bulleted list. I just have long pages of really poor uh, penmanship. Um, and that's it. Now, um, you can start with anything, right? You can start with a pen, you can start with a pencil, you can start with any kind of paper, computer paper, whatever. I wanted to feel inspired by it. I, I feel like that's, uh, that's something I'm beginning to understand with myself, that I like to be inspired by the tools that I use. So I dove head first into fountain pens, of all things. And I picked up a a fountain pen and then I shopped around and found an ink that I really like. It's a really beautiful ink. And um, I got a Japanese papered notebook. Uh, It's an MD notebook. And my pen, if you care, it's a Twisby 580. Um, And I have a Ferris wheel ink and it's um, something about sapphire or something. It's just really pretty. It's got a little shimmer to it. It's just a lovely ink and it's just kind of for me. It's just my own pen specifically for this thing. It now has a place on my desk and I just can free write and get all this kind of gunk out of my head every single morning. And it feels so cathartic. So that allows for spaciousness. That clears my mind of all the stuff that's just kind of clogging it up. The impending timeline of this thing, it's this frustration with that vendor or me waiting for a proposal from someone or someone needing to check in with me or you know, being frustrated that somebody took a week off uh, of vacation and things aren't moving at the pace I want them to. Like whatever the thing is, I can write down in that notebook and just get it out. And I find those two things to be incredibly helpful. So the second thing first, which is morning pages to provide, uh, to kind of like eliminate the garbage in your mind and just kind of settle things. And then the second one is to ask yourself a really good question and then sit with that. Sit with that while you're out for a walk, while you're in the shower. Um, my wife would tell you that I take the longest showers of anyone she knows. And I do. And I, I love it. Um, I love taking an obsessively long shower, a 30-minute shower, uh, because I'm thinking about something. And that's work time for me. Like That's time that I'm actively trying to do something. But I'm not doing it in this traditional sense of muscling it. I'm doing it in the sense of first creating the space and then calling in what the answer could be. And if that feels kind of woo-woo to you, um, like maybe I'm just using language that feels woo-woo. But I'll tell you, uh, being clear with what you want and um, having the space for that thing to happen is, a, you know, it's required. If you want to start a new business, if you want to be a fractional CMO and you're working full-time for a company, you have to like create space to consider the fractional CMO thing. What's it going to be like? What am I going to do about health insurance? Am I going to tell my spouse? Uh, what do I do with my current clients? Um, do I even know how to serve a client as a CMO? Like, as you have all those questions, you have to be able to process them. Maybe morning pages is helpful for you. Maybe each one of those questions, the big questions, you just reflect on while you do something. So part of your personal owner's manual, if you were to write one, would have a uh, chapter in it called How to C- How I Create Spaciousness in My Life So That I Can Bring Forth Creativity. And it'd be a long chapter title, <laughs> but you'd have a way of doing it. So I encourage you to figure out what that is. This is something that's special to you. Um, years ago, my wife and I drove a lot. We were living in... New Orleans before we were married and we would drive to Birmingham, Alabama to see her family or up to Northern Michigan to see my family. Those were long trips. Um, then we got the RV and we drove around the country for a couple years. Those were, that was just like a lot of driving time. And I really love that driving time. I miss it. I find myself these days, um, when I've got some space and I don't have childcare duties, I like to go driving and like, where do I want to go? It doesn't really matter. I just don't really want to be on a highway. I just want to go somewhere where there's a little bit of, um, 
where the sights are inspiring. So I live in Philadelphia. I can get out to the Pine Barrens. I like to go out there. And it's just like an interesting landscape. Um, I find that to be beautiful. I find the um, uh, Amish and Mennonite villages near us to be really wonderful. And these hardworking people outside with their horse-drawn um, hay balers uh, or whatever their you know tools are that they use. I just like to slow down, stop on the side of the road, relax, no music, and just kind of experience that. And what I find is that it calms my nervous system and it allows me to just have a greater sense of creativity, which when focused on solving a problem means that I tend to find an answer that I wouldn't find through force alone. So that's it. I think that you and your personal owner's manual should write a chapter on creating spaciousness in your life, and then do that at some regular interval. Figure out ways in the day when you can do it. This isn't like a workout where I think you should do it three times a week. I think you should have events where you do this and you let yourself do it. Uh, maybe you protect an hour in the morning to go for a walk uh, a couple days a week or one day a week or every day a week or whatever it is. Um, but you take off the you know, AirPods, you take out the headphones, and you just kind of go with yourself and you see what comes up um, and you trust that intuition because you'll be able to take all the stuff that you've learned and just be able to apply it in a new and a novel way. You know, what is creativity? Creativity could be defined as taking something that works in one discipline and applying it to a brand new discipline. That could be the definition of creativity, right? It doesn't have to be like this wildly inventive thing. I can't draw. I can't doodle. My penmanship is really mediocre. Okay, but I feel very creative in these endeavors when I'm washing dishes or walking my dog or taking a shower that I can come up with an answer that I couldn't come up with in another way. So something for you to chew on. And if you want to help becoming a fractional CMO, if you're saying, hey, I'm a full time employee and I want to leave the world of being a you know, CMO or marketing director or whatever you are, maybe you're a marketing consultant or you own an agency and you want to be a fractional CMO and you want help and you want some shortcuts and you want to know exactly how I did it and how a bunch of our members are doing it, um, just book a call with us. Go to cmox.co slash call. We recently had a member who in the first 30 days uh, brought in $25,750 in recurring business. Now, that's not for everybody. Not everybody's going to do that, right? Um, he's special. Uh, just a really committed guy. Um, is he smarter you know, than everybody else. I, I, I wouldn't say that he is necessarily smarter. I would just say that he knew what he wanted. And he was willing to pay the price and do the work. And he did it. And he kept on it. And in 30 days, he had an enormous win. Um, similarly, we had a woman um, who just let me know just a couple days ago, just four days ago, um, that she just closed a client $12,000 a month with a 12-month commitment. Oof. What would that mean to you if you could close one client at 12 grand a month with a 12 month commitment? Would that cover your nut for you and your family? Would it get pretty close to it? Would it give you the confidence that you need that you could leave your full-time job or you could leave the agency or you could shut down the agency or just simplify your life? Maybe. If we can help you, I'd love to. Head over to cmox.co slash call and I'll talk to you soon. See ya. Thank you for joining us for today's show. For more information and episodes, visit our site at fractionalcmoshow.com. Go ahead and punch that like and subscribe button on your favorite podcast app. It means a lot, at least to my mom. 